Good morning, wonderful people of Fraserview. Welcome to our online um, Sunday service. We are continuing to talk about prayer, and again, Andrew will give some, an activity for you to think about how we could all enrich our prayer lives. Um, pay attention to the music, sing along, and answer the questions with folks that you're gathering together with. We hope you enjoy the service.
and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel of Matthew begins by announcing that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. And then Matthew ends with the verse that we've just heard read from his Gospel. That little sentence saying uh, that, he, that Jesus will be with his disciples until the end of the age. In between, of course, Matthew does all the things about outlining the instructions and expectations for disciples. But I think it's clear what he thinks is the key thing that has changed the disciples' lives. That Jesus is with them. That he is in his presence is with them in every situation. And even now as he goes out to ascend, he is going to continue to be with them by his spirit, which he's going to send down to them. In our other text, Paul is celebrating the fact that Jesus is always with him through all his suffering all the resistance he experiences all the difficulties he get into Jesus presence is with him and that enables him to keep going Paul is confident that nothing separates him from the presence of Jesus and therefore from the love of God and he wants that to be deeply embedded in the lives of all disciples it's what changes their world changes their life and aids them as they live accord out the loving relationship that God has given them. That Jesus by his spirit is with them in every situation. So of course, if Matthew thinks this is so key and Paul thinks this is so key, it asks the question, are we experiencing this presence of Jesus in our lives? Do we feel like Jesus is present in every moment of what goes on in our lives? And that is obviously part of the struggle of discipleship. And I think what we're pressing into here is how prayer is designed to help us to experience Jesus' presence in everything that goes on in our lives. Prayer is given to us by God in order to shape us and to mould us into people who know his presence at all times as we go about our lives in this physical world. And so as we press into prayer today uh, and as we think about it in, over the weeks, one of these aspects is that we are to experience God with us through, the prayer, through our prayer lives. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Paul's instruction to the Thessalonians to pray continuously is part of his care of them as he disciples them and helps them grow into their life in Jesus. Paul's life was transformed when he became aware that Jesus was the Messiah, was the Lord, and that he was with him, that he was the resurrected ruler of the entire world. And that, of course, is what is distinctive about disciples their worldview, how they understand everything that is going on in the world and in their lives and in the communities they're involved in is changed and shaped by the fact that Jesus is resurrected over the world and that he is present in the world bringing about uh, the goodness that God intends to be there, the life that God intends to be there. And so those disciples are then invited into that good news, to share that good news, to share that new way of life. Paul's urging is aimed at this transformation. Prayer is one of the foundational ways in which God changes and shapes our life, in which he draws us uh, into being disciples of him or being people who bring his life into every aspect of our lives. We share the good news of what he's doing in the world. And the difficulty of being a disciple is that the physical world with all its busyness and everything going on can easily cover up the spiritual end of life. And by spiritual I mean the way in which we relate to ideas and people and uh, to other entities uh, in a way which is difficult to see. 
Um, there's an unseen world that goes on and makes up humanity and connects us to God that is difficult, different than the physical world that we are part of. And so God gives us prayer as a way of helping to build those relationships in our inner life as we connect to the, to the world and to ideas and to other people and to spiritual beings um, through our inner life. God also gives us scripture in order to ga- engage with our idea about how the world is and to teach us truth, to teach us about who Jesus is, to give us an idea of how God is being work in the world through his people throughout the ages. And finally, God gathers us together, whether on Sunday mornings um, or um, in home churches or through gardening uh, or um, in other ways that our community gets together when we cook together, when we eat together, when we gather on Wednesday community nights. All those things are ways in which God allows us to have people in our lives who speak about how Jesus is present in our lives, how he is at work and what he is doing. And so God gives us those foundational pieces to aid us as we go out into the world. And so the aim is for us to engage with those practices so that they shape and mold us. And so we can have the sense that we are part of his family, part of his work in the world. And we sense then that we are friends with Jesus and that he is someone that we can confide in, someone who supports and encourages and strengthens us as we need it, someone who we can celebrate with. And this is all good news. But obviously entering into that relationship means that we need to have prayer lives that give us intimacy with Jesus and help him overflow into every other aspect of our lives. So I want you to reflect on, uh, as your first question this week, on what occasions do you experience Jesus' presence in your life? I find that I experience Jesus' presence when I see other people serving those in need. Uh, When people go out of their way to show kindness and love to those uh, that they might not have done otherwise. When they have the humility and the patience in their own lives uh, to go and to care for others. And this is because I know in our world it's hard to make that time. And that that, uh, that time and energy is produced by being people who are following Jesus and being changed by him. He's taking that focus uh, in those people out of serving their own needs and desires. And instead he says... And has made them people who sacrifice a little bit for others. So that they go out of their way to love and to care for others. And so what I see then is I see the work of Jesus uh, being present in them. And present in the way that they are serving others. And that then draws me in to be encouraged about the way in which uh, Jesus is present in my life. He's present in my community. uh, And I know that the world is different because Jesus has entered into our lives. I experience Jesus' presence when I'm in community with other people and sometimes when I'm interacting with them I feel this deep sense that I'm surrounded by Jesus, that he is with me and, and helping me form the thoughts and actions that I'm participating in. Um, it's, it's this feeling that um, when I meet that person or interact with them that I might be the only face of Jesus that they see for that day or that week or that year. And so I want it to be right. I have to check myself. I don't feel I need to put on the goody goody Christian face, but I do feel I need to show the true and sincere life that Jesus calls me to. Sometimes I find myself speaking words that I don't believe I formally formed in my brain or I'm doing something, I'm, I'm, I have an action that I hadn't actually thought about. And those are the times that I believe I've been led by the Holy Spirit. And so I lean into those times because that's when I feel his presence. And it's not like I have these soul-searching salvation moments with people that are brilliant and huge. Sometimes they're just the ordinary. Sometimes it's the smiling or encouraging the frustrated mother in the line at the store. Sometimes it's... um, creating really clear boundaries for somebody who's speaking aggressively to me or moving into my space. Sometimes it's asking the really hard questions that I feel somebody is searching for and digging into those really hard truths about their lives. And maybe they're afraid to ask the question and afraid to even talk about it. I feel like Jesus is giving me the strength to ask those questions. So I know Jesus is with me in those moments that his presence is there because I'm acting a little bit outside of my comfort zone, but still I have this really deep feeling 
that it's exactly what I'm supposed to say or do. When I think of the places that I experience the presence of Jesus, um, I, I think of two uh, specific things. So first of all uh, is music, which I'm sure you can tell by uh, some of the work that I do here. Um, God has used lyrics of songs to speak to me in really, really profound ways. And he continues to do so through a lot of the worship that we sing uh, here on Sunday mornings. I think of lyrics like, uh, even when I can't see it, you're working from the song Waymaker. Um, the end of the song, The Blessing, which just sings, he is for you, he is for you. Um, and, and one of my personal favorites recently is the song, Greater You, Lord, in which the chorus reminds us that even the very breath in our lungs comes from God. These songs offer such a great reminder of the presence of Jesus, and uh, God has used these songs really, um, really powerfully in my life to speak to me and remind me of his presence. The other way is through creation. Um, God has used creation to speak to me um, a lot of times, but I think of the first time I really felt like I heard God speak to me was uh, in a youth camp trip when I was in high school. Uh, the pastor told us to take our Bibles and go out. It was nighttime, and, and he said, um, here's a verse you can look up if you want. Otherwise, just open the Bible, read a bit, pray a bit. Um, but, but more than anything, just try to leave space for God to speak to you. So I took my Bible to an empty spot on the grass, and I opened up to Romans 1, and I read um, verse 20, which talks about how God reveals himself uh, through creation. And I was going through a point in my life where I was really asking and praying God to reveal himself to me, because I was struggling with the fact that God was invisible, and I had no frame of reference for who God really was. And God used nature, God used the stars that I was looking at, God used the trees around me to say, look, I'm all around you. Um, I reveal myself through my creation. And so Jesus' presence with me is, is illuminated so well for me through creation. Uh, it's one of the ways that he reminds me that he is present with me. Throughout history, disciples of Jesus have used short prayers to remind them that Jesus is present with them. You see it pop up in nearly every movement as you look throughout sort of church history. For example, the Desert Fathers in the 3rd and 4th century uh, in the Egyptian desert um, used Psalm 70 verse 1 to recall to them the presence of Jesus in everything that they did. What they were doing was they were combining those two foundational pieces, scripture and prayer together, to help them to be reminded that God is with them all the time. And they allowed then the way in which uh, Psalm 70 verse 1 works to remind them of the entire scriptural story. So they aren't just focusing on the words of one particular verse, they're allowing it to be a way that draws them into the story of scripture and therefore into the presence of Jesus. And that, of course, reminds them of how their lives are part of that story as well. The story of their lives fits within the great big story of all that Jesus is doing in the world. So the verse uh, goes like this. Come to my help, O God. Lord, hurry to my rescue. And so they found that as being a way to remind them that Jesus is with them in every situation and against every danger. It expresses their humility before God. It expresses their watchfulness. It expresses a sense of frailty. Um, it expresses the fact that they need assurance from God. And it expresses a confidence that his help is at hand and in their lives. It was a way for them to reflect on the great love of Jesus for them and to have it enter deeply into all situations. So what they did was they memorized that verse and they recited it as a way of reminding them that Jesus is with them as they went about their lives and as they cared for people and as they dug deeply into the spiritual journey they were on. It's important to remember that these short prayers are Christian prayers. They're spoken to a person, Christ Jesus. There's other uh, elements in our society that use uh, short phrases as ways uh, to sort of direct the self. So in Buddhism, there's a use of mantras as a way to uh, recenter yourself by uh, reducing your experience of the world around you and even your experience of yourself. Uh, so there's a kind of losing of yourself a little bit, uh, saying the world isn't real and isn't as substantial. And then of course in self-help literature in the Western world frequently we use phrases to remind ourselves about the good things that we want to think about ourselves. So we attempt uh, to use phrases to remind us 
that we are good enough or smart enough or that people like us. The short prayers that Christian uses, of course, are reminding us that we are in relationship with Jesus and that Jesus is the one who shapes the reality that we're in. Uh, that he has given us value as people that he has rescued and saved and loved. Uh, but also that our value doesn't come solely from us trying to soak up those feelings in ourselves, but instead are expressed as we enter into the world that, that Jesus is making. And so short prayers remind us of the reality of the world. What is really going on? That God has created this creation. It has gone wrong in some ways and we have gone wrong in some ways and that he has entered in to rescue people and to draw them back into his love and to make them people who bring his love into creation. And that all happens when Jesus is present with us and that we are aware of Jesus' presence with us because Jesus' presence is to know that we are loved by God. And that obviously works in our lives being by being a protection against the hardships of life. We become those disciples that Matthew was imagining as he wrote his gospel. People who have been changed by the presence of Jesus in the world. People who would always have Jesus with them and therefore would be able to live into that role of disciples. Living according to Jesus' instructions, living according to his way and expressing that way in the world uh, as they go out. So my second question for you this morning is how would your life change if Jesus was more present with you? I think a greater experience of Jesus in my life would aid me in appreciating the meaning that goes on in all the things that I do. For someone of my personality, it is easy to feel I am on a treadmill of activities which make little difference in the world. To feel a little bit negative and down about the impact of your life. It means that I don't end up feel very encouraged by the things that I'm investing myself in and they don't necessarily bring me as much joy as maybe they should. And so a greater awareness of Jesus' presence will remind me of the value of what I do, that he is at work in and through my life and that changes other people's lives and that is of value. There's great meaning to those tasks that I do and that would allow me to run with a little bit more joy, a little bit more excitement at seeing God at work. Uh, in and through my life. I think of a particularly challenging time for me uh, about a month or so ago when the reality of the pandemic really hit me around the social isolation and um, there were some big interpersonal challenges I was facing and I was full of self-doubt and along I'm, I'm at work and along comes Elizabeth Connect and she comes to the door and comes in and there she is in her joyful encouraging um, happy self and we chatted for a bit and I just said to her you know I want to be just like you when I grow up what's your secret and she said to me she said I don't worry about anything and it was a humble reminder that um, Jesus talks to us a lot about not worrying and in fact Paul Paul tells us in Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that's what I look forward to and being more present with God and have, or with Jesus and having him more closely connected with me is finding that peace and not worrying. So I thank you, Elizabeth, for that reminder. So recognizing the presence of Jesus more in my life, I think would act as a filter for me, um, reminding me of the reasons that I'm doing things and changing the way that I do things in my life. I think specifically of the fruit of the Spirit, and I think that um, when, I, when I'm understanding more that Jesus is present with me, uh, it encourages me to live out the fruit of the Spirit more in my life. Um, two specific ones probably come to mind. First is patience. Um, out of that list, I think that uh, patience is something that I do much better when I recognize that Jesus is present with me. It helps me be patient with the people that I am working with, living with, um, spending time with. The second is joy. I think that um, when I'm the best version of myself, that is the version that isn't focused on me, but is focused on Christ, I think that that's the most joyful version of myself. And so I find that focusing on Christ and recognizing his presence in my life is something that brings me a great deal of joy.
So this week's activity, and as I said last week, we're going to have an activity each week throughout this series so that you can try out uh, and add new additions to your prayer life so you can deepen uh, your intimate relationship with Jesus. This week's, of course, is to practice, memorize and recite a short prayer as a way of reminding you that Jesus is present with you, that he assists you, that he celebrates with you, that he mourns with you, that he is in all your experiences through every day. And of course, when we're doing this, it's important to pray this both when we celebrate and, and when we have difficulty. Both are moments when we need Jesus uh, to be part of our lives. So what I would suggest to build up this habit of having the prayer always in the back of your mind, always on your lips so that you are praying continuously uh, is to repeat it sort of every 15 minutes uh, until it gets dug into your heart and your soul and your mind, dug into your life. Remember that the aim of the prayer isn't just to say the words, but instead to feel and experience God's story uh, through the words and to reach out into the present situation so that Jesus is present with you in them. And um, There are several options of different words that you can use uh, that have been used throughout sort of church history. Uh, obviously, we've already mentioned uh, the Psalm 70 verse 1. Come to my help, O God. Lord, hurry to my rescue. And we also have the Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Or you could try the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or maybe you could take something from Proverbs 3, uh, verse 6, direct my steps according to your word and will. Or from Psalm 86, verse 11, teach me your way, Lord that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Those are a few options that have been used throughout church history. You all also might be able to invent one of your own, something that is particularly meaningful. Try and get something that speaks broadly and can be used in all situations. Or you might find a song, that lyric that might work for you as well. And so be blessed in that process.
thanks for joining us this morning. It's great to share in this kind of community with you as we learn about prayer and um, yeah, worship and gather together. Check out the prayer list. It's uh, in the email and it's on the website and that gives you a great opportunity to care for people in our community. Also, Wednesday evenings on sunny days at six o'clock, we're gathering here to care for these beautiful grounds. Um, it's a great time to connect with each other, care for each other, and care for God's beautiful creation. Mary Lou is putting together a foyer art show showing how we as a community have shared our time in isolation during this pandemic. So if you have a really great picture of what it is that you did with your family, send it into fraserviewchurch at gmail.com and we will have it printed off in canvas and my understanding is that you'll get the picture when the art show is finished. So could be a fun thing to do. Finally, pay attention to your email as we are coming up with our reopening plans and more details and information will be coming to you. That's all we have for this week. Have a blessed week. Bye.